how did you find the process of turning Level Up Kaiju into an audio book? Oh, very good. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> you're always always good, Graham. <laughs> always brilliant. You've got captured monsters, Eric said, walking up to the glass and placing his hands upon it. He couldn't help but stare at the kaiju. This close up, they were almost majestic, despite their deadly power. Oh, come now. You've used the F-19. You know that's not the case, right? Placed directly opposite the elevator was a small podium with a microphone on it. She pressed a crimson-red switch and leant close to the phone, covering its tip. A moment of your time, gentlemen, to greet our new guest. The kaiju stopped their brawl, both turning to face the tiny humans watching them. They waved awkwardly like schoolchildren told to greet a visiting politician looking for a photo op. These are people with their own devices, aren't they? Eric said. That would be correct. These are some of our highest-level matrix users. You see, bioconstructs, the grown kaiju that defend humanity, aren't kaiju at all, not really. They're people just like you or Erin, using what we call essence to turn the power of kaiju against them. Tracy Gregory, this is a great book. Where'd you get the idea from? Oh, this is inspired by kind of like a very lifelong love of mine, which is cheesy Japanese giant monster movies. I have <laughs> a vast collection of them, so it was always something that was in the back of my mind. I got that feeling. It's very, it, it's a, it's a, a massive twist on a Godzilla uh, yeah. type movie. So, where did you get the idea of having? Well, humans become the monsters, but to use their forces for good and not for evil. It it's a, it's kind of a well worn trope within the kind of subgenre, actually. Yeah, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of kind of again, it's all Japanese television, like superheroes who do that kind of thing. They right. have like they go from being a person to a very large person normally <laughs> that then fights a a monster. I suspect it's probably an excuse just to have cheap suits so they can do wrestling moves, but that it's a very common thing, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see, right, so you tapped into that. Now, with it yes. being then inspired by something that's very popular in Japan, have you got plans to translate the book into Japanese? Uh, not at the moment. The onsen Zuri, would it's very expensive for translation. Is it? Yeah, yeah, very, very expensive, so not, not currently. Yeah, um, I'd have to count myself out of the audiobook version of that, obviously. Oh, yeah, unless you fancy learning. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I've been to Tokyo, and I still do not know how... We didn't rent a car. We, we got by on the public transport, and I still do not know how we did it. Because it's not like when you go to, say, you go to France, where everything's written in French, and a lot of it you can... Once you've learned that sortie is exit... And a yeah. lot of the other words, uh, you can kind of just about work out. But Japanese, it's just a character. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, um, I, I still don't know how we worked it. Have you been to Japan? No, no, never myself. It's a fascinating place. Um, it is quite an amazing place. One of, the, one of my favorite things I like about Japan, or I heard, is, you know, these people, these fitness freaks, oh, I don't know, you might be one of them who have to walk 10,000 steps a day. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you know where that figure of 10,000 a day came from? It's like the steps to a temple or something, isn't it? It's something like that. Or the you would think, or... you would think yeah. it was something like that. Yes, you would yeah. think that. The actual reason is apparently the Japanese character for walking... Right. No, the Japanese character for 10,000 looks like a person walking right <laughs> and that's that's why it's ten thousand steps fair enough i guess so so there we go all right so in this book it's it's another lit rpg adventure yes now for yeah. anyone who doesn't know what they now the people who do know this is these are um, massively popular with the people that are into these and this is the I think this is the sixth lit RPG book I've done with you, and I'm working on the seventh right now. Yes. I think yeah. I've got those numbers right. Just for anyone who doesn't know what lit RPG is, just explain it for us. Yeah, so it's a, it's a genre of novels um, that 
emulates partly the kind of mechanics of uh, a video game in this particular case like a, a role-playing game so it will tell you like you know a character does something it might tell you then the exact effects of that and the kind of numerical impacts of that sometimes yeah it yeah it's a difficult thing to explain once you've read it you know it you understand it you're like right yeah, yeah. i get it yeah it's a very hard thing to then explain outside yeah of it it sounds quite strange but it makes a lot of sense when you No, it was brand new to me with the first one i did for you and i love them now because it's just like a weird way of keeping score yeah. throughout yeah. the book as every as they take on a new task as the characters take on new, new tasks or quests then points are awarded for different things within that task based on its yeah. degree of difficulty and and they um they become more powerful or less powerful depending on whether they uh, complete the tasks and uh it is really good and, and it some of them relate to the, the the card games um yeah but this one this one doesn't but it doesn't not necessarily card games but um it, it it's it's just a way of keeping score and strength and power and even size of, yeah. of the character it, it all comes down to based on their experience level and yeah. uh no, it is great because that's an, that's an extra little thread that's that's following through the story. But the story quite compelling as well. I, th what... I think I think that's part of why, as you notice, the the kind of subgenre is quite popular because I think there's an inherent thing people want to keep track of stuff. People want to know the exact figures. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when you buy a car, they tell you, "Oh, it's got ten thousand torque or whatever." You don't know what that means, <laughs> but it's a big number and you like it. And so yeah. I think it's like a human nature thing. You want to see that and be able to track that progression sometimes i think that's why it kind of ties into something in the back of your mind that you've always got and don't quite realize i think yeah and it's a good way of knowing what they're up against because you get this you get the scores from the the opposition often as well and you can see yeah. you know whether they're up to it or whether this is going to be a you know it's like it's like a football fixture when it's two top teams yeah. in the table it's going to be a better, a better battle than it is if it's a top table well, yeah, it's, exa the it's exactly it's exactly you with football isn't it you watch anyone play fantasy football and they know that goal score percentage of a particular striker people i think love that kind of thing i think they yeah anywhere you go i think people like the idea of tracking things yeah do you track who reads or who listens to the audiobooks like whether there's a big male female skew or anything like that do you pay any attention to that yeah not not to unfortunately there's no way of tracking it with sales you've no idea someone buys a book it just tells you they buy a book or an audiobook I'm sure you know, you don't, don't clue. But you do with, obviously, because I run adver adverts and things like that, and you do see, the, like, especially on like Facebook and things, the reactions to the adverts. And it is it is a predominantly male-led genre. There yeah. are obviously female, people, women that buy it and women that write for it, I know plenty, but it, it is predominantly kind of 20-plus uh, kind of males up until like kind of 50, 60, some people. But that, that's the kind of broad swath swath of it i think it'll get wider as it gets more popular yeah um, but yeah that's that's what it is at the moment and it is becoming more popular i i only know this from you know acx where i go to look for books to audition for mm -hmm. there's a lot more lit rpg yeah. on there than i mean you, i think yours was the first one i'd seen when i did the first one um yeah. the first uh, goblin summoners book but uh I, I see them more and more now authors putting them up so it is a really growing well, it, it is it is now the i can't remember what they're called but there's a, a governing body that determines what is a genre um, right. like when you go to a library or waterstones or on amazon and you've got the genre categories that is all determined by this one governing body and i think as of february lit rpg will be its own genre it will yeah it will wow. yeah so alongside like say fa standard fantasy and science fiction and romance you'll have lit rpg as its own whole category now is it a subsection of much. science fiction or a subsection of fantasy? Well, now it's its own thing. It's its own thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. Now it's right, its own cool. genre. So you, you would, you, you know, this is more of a science fiction type thing, isn't yes. it? Yes. Where Goblin Summon is more of a fantasy. Yeah. Like now you would see, like, on once Amazon's ever dated, you'll see the categories as like lit RPG, and then the next subcategory is fantasy, and then whatever else they tack on at the end. Yeah. But it'll be its own defined thing now. Yeah. Oh, it's, an, it's 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 a great thing, and it is a great book. Let's talk about the characters then. The main character, Eric, where does he come from? Um, I just always like the idea of someone who was. You see these kind of giant monster movies, and people always run and escape. I always like the idea of the, focusing on a person who was 
just kind of stuck. You know, he doesn't get on the 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 escape bus and get away. He's not you know flooded out when a monster comes out of the bay. He is then suddenly finds himself in that scenario. And how would you how would you cope? When obviously things happen to him that are outside yeah. the realm of what you would expect. Yeah. But it's but he's not he's of... not a he's not a full on commando or anything like that. No, you know? no, yeah, yeah. He's, well, he's, a, he's a banker, isn't he? <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was just a kind of how he's kind of the everyman, isn't he? That's the idea. He's the guy caught up in it all that doesn't quite know what's going on but makes tries to do his best he can right yeah usually usually with your books i have a favorite character and in the goblin summoners uh, i like sarkaran because he's just so full of himself and he's just a little delusional and often it's the main character but this one it's not eric it's not even it's not even a human i love aura the ai yeah that that and if someone was told would tell me that you're going to do a book with lots of these characters and you know some of them larger than life and some of them you know um the um erin the texan who is you know proper full-on military yeah. and stuff and then annalisa who's a, a, a german and stuff if someone says to me no no you're gonna you're, you're gonna really like the ai who isn't really even a person it's just a, a device on eric's yeah. arm but that I thought that was very clever, the way you'd written that with a personality, because it would be tempting to write an AI as pretty cold. Yeah, yeah. Deliberate. Well, it, that was deliberate, right? It is, because it's it's kind of one of the threads of the plot, isn't it? That having a personality is a thing they develop over time, but they're not quite supposed to. Yes. Yeah, so yes, it, it, because it, they're it interacting is... with humans all the time. Yes, yes and, they're, yeah. and they're a learning device. So they're going to learn from the people they're communicating with constantly. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, so it, it's, an, it's an intentional thing, yeah. Plus it gets more fun, you know. <laughs> it, it does. I mean, I don't want to give anything away. No spoilers. And I'm not going to spoil anything here. But I'll just say that the Aura finds out something about himself and his origin about halfway through the book and it gets really interesting because he has a hard time dealing with it. Yeah. And then he accepts it and then he comes out the other side and he's just a bit more, he's even, he's even more, um, has even more of a personality. He's even more real on the other side of it when he's come to terms with, with what's happened. And I loved that about his character because I didn't see that coming. I thought, okay, we've got an AI here and, and often, that kind of character I found is written into a story as more of a, a device to yeah. move the story along or to fill in any background. But no, he is a proper, fully formed character who goes through his own crisis and deals with it. It was just, it's just great. Did, had you seen that somewhere before or, or is that totally original? No, well, I, there, there obviously you get AI characters and things in different stories and they do sometimes have character arcs, but I wanted... Because the book is about kind of the progression of Eric as he goes from a you know, very small monster to a very large monster. Very large monster. And I, wanted, yeah. I wanted kind of Aura's arc to kind of mirror that in a way. You know, he starts as he starts, you know, a simple AI. And as they, they kind of go through the same things together as a, a partnership, really, aren't they? Yeah. And then they kind of both grow and come out of it. It's, it's slightly different people from when they started or as a person where they didn't yes. start. As a, that was kind yeah. of... Yeah. The yeah, I never, I, I never made that that connection. The parallel that they're both, they're both becoming more rounded people based on their experience. Yes, and mm -hmm. what they find out about what's really going on, and yeah. that's another. I mean, it would have been it would have been a great book anyway, if if Eric was just used to fight monsters and stuff. But there's another subplot there going on, which makes it even. It, it works on another level as well because you think. Oh, and it speaks to, like I say, I don't want to say too much, but it speaks to corruption and the way that people would rather have the beautiful lie than the ugly truth. And mm -hmm. it, it's it's it, there's something very real about that. I think, especially in today's day and age, um, is the book set in the, slightly into the future, or is it is it in now? Well, yeah, it doesn't really so, matter. The, so there's a again in Japanese monster movies. There's a trope where if you if you watch the films, they always give a date, but they'll give the date as like 1990X. They'll never give the exact year, just just vaguely kind of where it is. So it's vaguely kind of 
maybe like a year or two into the future, maybe a little bit further. It's not, it's not exactly a hundred percent clear. Right. I mean, it is definitely in our future. They do mention if, you know, events that have happened. Yes. But you could yeah. easily also say, or well, maybe they happened in the eighties and this is now, it's always meant to be kind of slightly fuzzy when it is, because again, that's a, it's a very common thing in the kind of giant monster genre. They're always a bit edgy about where it is and isn't set. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, like I say, this is the this is the sixth book we've done together. We're working on a seventh now. Okay. How many books do you work on? Because you, that's an incredible output. Because I, I think we've only been working together for about a year. It's a yeah. lot of books. So, how many do you work on at once? Just one. Just one at a time. Just one at a time. Yeah, I couldn't do multiple books. It would fry my brain. I think I like to focus on one book and finish it. Yeah. And then do another book straight afterwards. I don't really give a break between them. I finish one and then maybe a couple of days later, once it's been published, I've already started the next book. And I see. Yeah. Away with that. It's always just a, a momentum is the key to it. Always just constantly doing it as often as you can. Yeah. Yeah. And are you still working full time? Not, no, not anymore. No. Oh, you've done, work. you've gone, you've gone I'm only pro part writing. Time. I'm only oh, part I see. Time. I see part time. Yeah. Because I just could not understand how you could do that, how you could get your head around. Um, working in an office in Cardiff, and then and, and then writing books, you, you, you'd be all you ever did every waking yeah, second. Yeah, it was yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so take me through the process then. When you 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 come to start a book like Level Up Kaiju, you 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 come to start the book. Do you do you map it all out, or do you just sit down and do it? Do you do you dictate it? Do you, what's no, the process? No, so I so I type everything. Everything's typed. Um, you're generally fine if you speak to a lot of authors there are there are kind of two camps when it comes to writing a book you've got plotters who plot everything out you know they've got vast backstories and everything written in advance and big binders full of all the history and then they've got what they call pantsers as in by the seat of your pants where you just sit down and you just write the book right. and then that's it and yeah. i'm very much the second category i sit down i've got a vague idea of like well i want it to be about x or y and, you know, if it's a sequel, like, I would know this happened in the last book. Yeah. And then I just go from there and just write it as it comes and see what see what happens. <laughs> that's, and that's you've got the point. characters down, though. You're not bringing in new characters along the way? You've got them down? Uh, I mean, they're always kind of in my head. I always think, right, okay, I need a character here, but I want them to be interesting and I want them to link into this plot in some way and yeah. be, you know, thematically relevant. But kind of, I never have, like... They don't have a name until they start speaking. <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't. Um, so I just start, I just kind of do it as it comes. Um, I know that frustrates some of my author friends who spend a lot of time on this, but I, I think it depends on how people's brains work. Some people can do that. Some people plan it all out. There's no right or wrong way. Yeah. You know, whatever gets the book at the end is, gets, is great, but that, that's how I do it. I just sit there, type it out. And do you have a quota of words in. you have to put out every day? Um. I try and aim for around 4,000 words a day. Yeah. Um, give or take. I generally end up either side of that by, you know, a couple of hundred, two, three hundred either side. But yeah, I try, I try and keep that um, going. Again, it's it's momentum. If you, if you kind of stop for too long at any point, it becomes difficult and you've got to build that word, back, word count back up. It's like exercise, yeah. isn't it? You, you do 10 reps one week and then 20 reps next week. And eventually you're doing the, the routine you wanted to do but if you give a break you've got to go back to the start you can't just go straight back in you'll well in that you'll injure yourself but in this you'll you'll tie yourself out so it's the same idea it's about keeping consistency yeah it's the important thing to get it done and how did you find the process of turning level up kaiju into an audio book oh very good yeah it's, it's <laughs> you're always always good graham honest. <laughs> always brilliant so I, no complaints there it's a uh, something uh, well worth doing if anybody's considering should i get an audio book done absolutely absolutely yeah. yeah yeah it's so much fun and it just um and it's a uh, you know to be um to, to cut to the chase about the money it's another income stream it's another way yeah, to sell a book yeah it is it's, from a from know. business perspective it would be leaving money on the table so yeah you know you do it because well, you need to eat you, know? <laughs> but you, you <laughs> yeah. do, and there are a lot of people now who are only audio they only listen they only, to audio books they don't read yeah, books they, don't, at all. they don't read normal books they only listen to audio books there's a lot of people who prefer them and that's absolutely fine 
you know, yeah. it's servicing those people who want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's so much fun to do. And if you would like a free copy, if you're watching this now and you've got this far in and you would like a free copy, with, like there's no strings on this. This is a free copy of Level Up Kaiju by Tracy Gregory. If you email me, and my email address is in the thing below, I'll just put the email address in there. If you email me, the first 10 people to email me who've watched this far of this, I'll send you a code and you can download it from Audible for free. There's, there's no catch. I mean, if you want to write a nice review, that would be lovely. But you don't have to, especially if you don't like it. But I'm sure you'll <laughs> love it because it's such a great story. It's uh, it's like a, it's a bit like a Godzilla movie kind of thing. However, it's the the guy in it is an ordinary guy. He's a banker, and he has to become these monsters to fight them and basically save the world. I mean, that's. Have I, I summed it up? Yeah, basically. I don't yeah. want to give too much away, but it is quite exciting. And you're going through his journey and the AI that accompanies him goes on a journey as well. And you also, there's there's some, shall we say, corporate skullduggery along the way that also is, is a subplot. So it's a terrific read because I read it, but it's, I'm sure it's a terrific listen when you listen to me reading it. So uh, if you'd like a free copy, just email me down there and just say, hey, can I have a free copy, please? First 10 people to do that, I'll send you a code and you'll be all set. And it would be nice if you leave a review. You don't have to. Tracy Gregory, it's always good to talk to you. And uh, thank you so much for choosing me to do this one because I really did enjoy it. Uh, it's it's well, I'm glad, I'm glad. just a great story. And, and one of the other great things about your books is there aren't too many characters. I think... I don't know if it's a mistake, but your book, I look at hours, I don't know how long it is, but your book's about 12, 13 hours long, which yeah. is on the long side for an audio book. And often books that long, I've done them where they've got over 100 characters. And I think the listener will start losing track of who's who. But yours, you have your core characters. You have the characters around them, like people, for instance, in the control room. There's quite a lot of people there when that's going on. But you've got your main characters and you're focusing on them. And it's all very, very efficient. You can just get on with the story and the adventure that's going on. So I, th I think you do really well doing it that way. I don't know whether that's right or wrong. There might be a reason why these people have over a hundred characters, I don't know, but, and it's no big deal. It's, it's more of a challenge to read when I have to come up with a hundred different voices, but uh, I like the way that yours, they just, and also with yours, and this is no, they hit the ground running. On yeah. In that first chapter, you're like, whoa, now we've got a story. They don't take three or four chapters to get going. You're no, just I've like, he's, he's right in the action from the very beginning. Yeah, I've always personally been a fan of stories that are not overblown. You know, if it's not necessary to the story, get rid of it. You know, that's, right. that's the end of the day. You know, if, it, if you've got three chapters of preamble and it doesn't really matter, well, get yeah. rid of it. They're not, they're not there. They're not exciting. Yeah. Start with the good stuff and keep going. That's <laughs> yeah. No, this really does that. It really, it starts, it starts. I, I don't want to say it starts in the middle because that's unfair. It doesn't start in the middle, but it starts when something is happening and you're trying to yep. work out what the hell's going on here and then you start you start piecing together what's going on but the action is there from the very very beginning and the challenge and the jeopardy and it's all right there and it um oh, it's just great it's called level up kaiju it's a lit rpg adventure it's by Cra tracy gregory if you like to read books go to amazon and get it downloaded if you like to listen to them, go to Audible or iTunes or Amazon. They got the Audible uh, version up there as well. And if you'd like one for free, be one of the next 10 people to email me. I'll put my address down there. It's uh, it's graham at macmedia.co.uk. Or, or you can see my web address there. You can email me through that or in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. And I'll give you one for free if you're in the, the first 10. Tracy Gregory, continued success. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I'm so glad you're not working full time anymore. You're going to kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs>